pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we're grateful tonight to be able to meet in this building uh, in freedom. We ask you, Lord, that you would protect our men and women who serve around the world, that we might stay here and be free and enjoy those freedoms that, you, uh, that have been bestowed on us. Lord, I ask you to help us as we do the town's business. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's right, record reflect the councilman Wiser and uh, I'll be joining us tonight as travel. Uh, announcements? Any announcements from the council or the... Sidewalk uh, city's doing well. We've got uh, sidewalk installed in Chasewood all around, about halfway around on Main Street. All the repairs are done inside Mayfield Gardens, so it's moving along. I've got a few people on my mirror. Yes. Uh, one, I'd just like to uh, publicly thank a few folks for all of their hard work to pull off the uh, Texas Oklahoma Patriot shoot off, which was uh, last weekend. We took in uh, 20 families from Fort Sill and Oklahoma, I'm sorry, Fort Sill and Fort Hood. Wounded Warriors uh, paired them with professional bass anglers and the, the town hosted a dinner for their families on a Friday night at a local church and then Saturday morning they had a fishing tournament. Uh, this year the biggest, uh, the biggest catch was 16.827 pounds for all three fish combined. Last year it was 5.6, so <laughs> it was a much better tournament in their eyes and I guess they contributed to just a, a change in the season by moving it up a little bit. But, uh, the fishermen were, were very happy, the soldiers were very happy, they were very appreciative to the town. Uh, many of the Parks and Recreation members out of their own pocket uh, are refusing to, to give me receipts for things. But I, I know they spent over $1,000 on, on the dinner and uh, for Saturday's activities. They, they just really feel compelled to, to do this event and make sure that it's right and that these families have, have everything that they need to have a, have a good weekend. So I want to thank Porter Walker and Randy Peterson uh, Randy uh, got up at 2 o'clock in the morning Friday to start cooking and then was there uh, Saturday to serve breakfast and just, he probably put in 16 hours behind a smoker. Uh, Harry Hopkins was the main organizer, Teresa Blake, John Smith for getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning with me to go out and I didn't have to get up stay <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a good time and I thank this council for their support for, their, for this event. Uh, I think it was a uh, fine and worthwhile event to, to continue doing. Uh, and of course, we, the partner will have a uh, needs analysis uh, at the next meeting to talk about what works, what didn't, and just make sure that we're constantly uh, improving the event. And then also, uh, I, I guess we've got three brand new uh, play systems coming into our parks. They're they're here. Not my facility. Okay. Okay. Well, when I spoke to. Uh, the gentleman at Total Recreation, he said that they were ships. I, I thought they were under so they're probably in transit and just laying on dirt work and then we can get those installed. So that'll be three brand new, uh, nice play systems in three parks at Sycamore Bend, Point Vista, and Harbor Lane. So are we going to take up all of Harbor Lane? That whole thing's coming out Everybody of place? Swing, swing on site. Swing stage. And everything else is replaced. Just want to let you know we have five citizens so far that signed up for citizens on patrol and we have three alumni so that's a total of eight we got to have at least a dozen before we start the training we get enough people to set up the training uh, when that's finished then we can look into getting beat i think we have some inroads to do that <coughs> not coming out of the town budget right but uh, we, need to, we need to do some more PR. People are a little slow, but still important. Well, I think there's a couple of us up here that are also members of the system. Do you count that number as well, or is that the no, system? No, we asked, uh, I got a call from two of them on, and I said they would be willing to do a refresher and mm -hmm. myself, of course, so that would say they have to do a refresher because there's been some changes in some walls. Is there a hard date set or any details that I could go out and start? We're just waiting for the amount of people to okay. be large enough. So once you get the amount, then we'll start talking about the training plan. I'll see if I can run with a couple. Okay. That's good. Cool. Thank you. Any other announcements? 
announcement. Let's move on to public comment. Purpose of this item is a lot of public opportunity to address the council. Apply the provisions of the Open Meetings Act. The town council will not discuss or take action on items brought forward and not posted on the agenda. Comments regarding any item on the agenda may be made at this time during the agenda item. So, uh, just a point from the screen. Did you want to wait or did you want to go ahead and do it now, Mr. Green? I'll go ahead. Okay, come on. Over. If you would, just state your uh, name and address. John Green, 106 Stamford Drive, Hickory Creek. Evening, Plaza. Agenda item number 10 states Consider that on the purchase of certain real property containing 1.3 and 7.75 acres. I wonder why we didn't specify where this is located or why we want to buy it. Now, I know Roger uh, emailed me, I know where it is, but we still don't know why. But why can't that be included? In the agenda item. Now, agenda item E1, cause number 2013, Randy Wall versus the town of Hickory Creek. We must like this subject since we keep eye on eye. May 21st, 2013, item E1, cause number 2013, Randy Wall versus the town of Hickory Creek. April 16th, 2013, item E2, Randy Wall versus the town of Hickory Creek. March 19th, 2013, item B2, Randy Wall versus the Town of Hickory Creek. September 15th, 2009, Agenda 4A, discuss, consider, and act on the stormwater drainage, concrete pipe from Town Hall to Point Vista, $1.6 to $1.8 million. November 18th, 2008, item number Agenda 2J, Discuss, consider, and act on the Town Hall Stormwater Detention Fund. That was taken. January 28, 2008. Peggy Hinkle Wolf article in the newspaper. Resident offers town easement. Town leaders hired a survey team after city engineers determined the Town Hall retention pond was undersized. As a matter of note, Randy often his land at $480,000 with a kickback of $80,000 for the animal show. So I can see why you would take a look on that. September 16th, 2008, item 5A, discuss, consider, and act on the stormwater drainage west of I-35. Design, retention, detention, $5,100 paid for course standards. February 19th, 2008, Item 4C, discussion regarding stormwater drainage west of I-35E. Now, there have been other discussions interspersed in there. On May 17, 2007, Blythe Dillon wrote in the Lake City Sun, at the December 19th Hickory Creek Council meeting, Grady Beecham of Danabon Engineering stated, we looked into the calculation of this plan, it was a 0.7. This method tends to undersize the pod and roughly needs 50% more storage than what it has. At that same meeting, at the April meeting, Mr. Beecham stated that to rectify the pond would cost $360,000 for temporary fix and much more for a permanent solution. The study was the exact same information that was stated a year and a half earlier by JPJR Engineers, presented by Councilman Randy Wall, to then Mayor Price and Coach and Marengo in an engineer company. We paid $15,000, 158.56 for the study, stating the exact same thing that Councilman Wall stated. <clears throat> now, Randy Wall is not a friend of mine. He's not a friend of mine. I've supported him. I've not supported him. Right now, he's not a friend of mine, nor is he a foe. He's a citizen of this town and deserves to have this matter concluded. So I hope he can do that without spending a whole lot more money. He stated in his lawsuit there were three options possibly one would work. Anyway, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Rank. Okay, I didn't receive any other form, so we'll move on to the public hearing, which there is not one tonight. We'll jump down to item C, just consent agenda items one through six. Any discussion on those items? Mr. Mayor, I just had a question with this right of way on. I'd like to listen to where exactly this is at. Let's 
say so.
enclave development. We actually are reducing the total drainage area due to some of the grading they're doing on some of the lots and streets in the enclave. The drainage area of the pond drops to about 19.5 acres versus that 21 acres we saw in condition two. So we included that and included the impervious area associated with uh, basically going from a 21 foot section at Tumbleville Road to a 36 foot section. And we found that that caused no change to the peak discharges at a Tumbleville Road compared to condition two, still well below condition one, which is the pre-development. And then finally, here's just a graph summarizing our results. These are peak discharges at Tumbleville Road. Uh, we've got discharge on the, uh, the y-axis, and then these are the different frequency storms. Uh, we looked at a range of storms from a, a very frequent event all the way up to a 100-year fairly uh, infrequent event. And you can see the condition one in red, that was the pre-development, and then condition two, and then condition three, where we've got the Tuberville Road uh, improvements in place. And you can see that the, uh, the road improvements in conjunction with the pond are not increasing those peak discharges uh, downstream of Tuberville Road compared to the uh, condition one. So in our opinion, the Tuberville Road expansion is not going to adversely impact peak discharges downstream. Brian, do you answer questions or does he have any questions? Oh, yes, there's any questions. Yeah, I just have one about Turbyville Road right there. So, the third lane going west, then, that uh, when, you, when you come down from the development that's occurring over here, we, we decided to put that third lane right there. That waterfall this way? The, yeah, that, that west, we're holding the, the south line of the pavement. Mm -hmm. The expansion is going to be on the north side of the road. So that water will drain off into that grade inlet that's there right now. That's going to be relocated due to the change in grading. But that water will be routed through that grade inlet, uh, basically the same, the same place it is now. The grading is just going to be shifted to accommodate the, the new grading associated with the widening of the road. What size is that that, that grading feed into? I think it's a type of each text got in yeah, there, which a, is a 3 by 3 something like that. That's not very big. Yeah. So it may actually be, uh, I'm not sure, it may actually be a little bigger than the one out there right now. I'm not sure. That's a different type of inlet that's out there right now. Three by three or four by four feet wide. Yeah. Kind of they're comparable. Do a couple of those get placed all the way down then next to the road or how does that work? Is it it's graded to a low spot okay. where that water, the, the culvert under Ronald Reagan, so some of that flow, that 2.4 acres that doesn't get routed through the pond, that area to the east of Ronald Reagan, that will come down to the borrow ditch on the north side of the Turbo Road, they go under the culvert under Ronald Reagan, to that low point where that great inlet is. Basically, like I said, pretty much what it's doing right now, that great inlet's just shifting as the road is expanded to the north there. Okay. Right. Any other questions? Brian, do you have anything on that? I know you've been working with him on. I think he covered basically in the show with the three different conditions. He mentioned that uh, there's a reduction in the amount of discharge from out of the ponds versus tree frogging. So, Thank you. Any other discussion amongst the council? Probably, probably I would say it's just kind of um, the opposite of what you think would happen with that land there, especially with development stuff. So it's actually improved it from the right. standpoint from one, two, and three conditions, which is pretty impressive. Right. Well, the discussion was going to D2. Center and act on the Tribune Road Reconstruction Project Contract Amendment Number Two with Half and Associates. Here with the We brought this on as we met with the uh, you know, Tribune Road improvements. As they go from the Ronald Road to the west, <coughs> to the western edge of the Enclave from here. You know where the Enclave is, which is the big area that's under construction up here. Uh, basically, we met with the property owner that is the south. Uh, Herbalville Road, it is the Elm Walker property, that's at the southeast corner of Harbor Grove Lane and Herbalville. Uh, gentleman's name is Dave Gar uh, Gar 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 and uh, he was concerned about concrete reusing in the 
that's, that was because we had to hold the flow line of the ditch, proposed ditch, and the proposed culvert. Early on, six months to eight months ago, we talked about you know, some channelization disruptors digging down about two feet. And he said, I, I don't want to do that. So as of Friday, he looked at all the concrete, didn't want to stay all that concrete, and it's, he wants to entertain doing a channel to his property. He's open to that. Uh, we've been on the property twice, and he's uh, really on board that. There'll be, there should be a cost savings to the town, construction-wise. You're going to have to build a concrete channel. And this property owner will be pleased as he said he's going to be staring at concrete that would have to be installed. So, and uh, earlier, earlier when we were doing the design of the culvert and the roadway, the road is going to actually have a dip in it. We're going to raise it up to the low point. That will go away. So, uh, this is an all around improvement. So, that's what this, this particular item covers the survey and redesign, uh, I said that channel downstream of the culvert. And where is this culvert at? It's right down there where the culvert is today. Right down there. This is the southwest corner of Montclave and basically the northeast corner of the Elmonger property. So anyway, that, that's what that's kind of the background here. And I think it, it'll be a big plus to do that. All right. So these fees right here, you're saying based on the cost of concrete, we should come out ahead. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> now is that putting the head wall or are you just talking about the actual concrete gate that comes out? Uh, basically, on the south side of the road, we're the bar ditch right there. We're going to keep the bar ditch system. And we're going to have the concrete about 150 feet, 100 feet of that, to, because it's going to be so steep. I love the road back down. Basically, put the road back where it is. You don't have that steep drop off and all that concrete. So, you eliminate that concrete, that's a huge cost. Any discussion? Jeffrey, anything that you could have to take a look at? Yeah, I've been a little better about it. We'll take that off. I'm going to be much more. Yeah. And then we like said, we'll be much better when we have a big old rise of the road there. Okay. I said early on, we tried to work that out eight, say about eight months ago. And now that the property owner has seen and tasted and looked at everything, I think he realized we need to do this. And the channelization will be contained just to his property. <coughs> the creek goes through about I'd say 200 feet of this property. So if it's one property owner, uh, he, he said he will not require an agent, and neither will we. We'll get a right of entry, contractor does the work, we go away, and that, that's his channel to make him. This, this leads into the next item. Okay. Anybody consider that for me? Mm -hmm. uh, for approval, yes. Yep. I'd like to move to accept the Turboville Road Reconstruction Project contract number number two with half associates as presented. Second. Can you second all the Aye. 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 Uh, should be at 425000 That is our engineer's estimate. That is not a contractor provided number. And uh, if you remember, this portion of Turtle Road is split. Some of the costs are split, split on the front edge of the on-play property with the developer. So it's about 700 feet of it, 50 50 costs between design and engineering. Uh, so if you break this up between the developer on play and the town, the town's looking at about 262000 on plays at 163. So that, that's kind of the split of just the construction. So well, with this, the purpose of this agenda item is to get permission from y'all to move forward and advertise for bid. It's not authorizing this to construction. This is to go forward and let's go ahead and authorize this to go out and advertise for bid. That process takes about a month, as you will know. And uh, we need to do a change as you just passed in the prior agenda item, but that change to be made and incorporated even prior to the aircraft that it is. All right, and that takes it up how far? What's the, just the, the, the distance for the on-play, right? Correct. One end to the other, that's it. Correct. Okay. 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 Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. 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 Okay. Right
That's correct. And just for your adult information, from that point where we stopped, just east of Harbor Road Lane, that's where the developers of Seaton Chase will take it from that point all the way down to the end for Harbor Ridge. Yeah, Harbor Ridge. Right. So at, at the end of the day, in about a year or so, we should have the whole stretch of paved property. Right. Okay. So I have a question. I, I was thinking that the Steeple Chase would end at Harbor Lane. They're going to come west of Harbor Lane? Just come east little, of Harbor Lane? Just a little bit east and they'll hook on to where we stop. That way it's seamless. Okay. It's, it's all there. Okay. So they are going all the way up. So they'll say what they were doing. If they were doing Harbor to... Well, that's not how they're not developing that. That piece of yeah. piece just got the big house on it. Right. Uh, last time I said, I checked the clarification. The last time I spoke, I, I understood that they were designing all the way up, putting up against the others. Because they had asked before we were stopping. Mm -hmm. and that's what we did. We stopped right here and said, okay, we'll put up against So we, if that's the case, we'll sit here and talk about it. Yeah. Up to the south side, correct? But according yeah. to the green part, yeah. yeah. They thought it was okay. the case. I'm not 100% clear about this. No, it's an agreement. I think it's 100%. You're 100% yeah. on on the north and south from yes. well, um, yeah. Park, Ridge Park Ridge to Harbor. Was yeah. right. So I thought there was going to be a, a little bit of a gap in there. But can we confirm that I'll, with them? I'll let's confirm. make sure that they're doing all the way to meet I'll, up with us. Yes, I'll confirm and I'll get back with the water to see if it's different. Is that a good question? <clears throat> okay, any other discussion on this? This falls under the uh, the ordinance where the developers got to go in and do their piece of it. So we're stepping up and doing looking at doing our piece of the well, so it's a pretty good, good bargain to get it all done at one time. That's yes. our engineering, design, and the scope and everything. So we get the, the bids back in time, the quality is still in there, we have no sale on mobilization, so maybe a little bit or again. They're still in there, that's done that. And that's a good point of definition. Yeah. 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 Well, let's take advantage of the fact that quality installation is semi-mobile in the yeah. tiers, but maybe we're not in there. We'll not lose that mobilization cost. Yeah. Do you remember what that cost was? Was it like 10% of that? Yeah, substantial. Yeah, you talk about the location. Yeah. It's about 5% of the total. It's 22. And, you know, I can't guarantee that it will be the low bidder, but it hooked up a good shot at it. So at this point, all we need to do is just send yes to the one that's working. That has to be the square on the other Any other discussion, please? Does <coughs> anyone have any questions for Brian? Now, how, uh, how are they? You've been talking to their engineers over there. They're ready to go to and partner up and get this thing done? Yes, talk about on Yes, absolutely. Okay. They are starting, as you can see, the road work out there, they're starting off the sewer line, and they are ready. Okay. How far is LCMA as far as them being done to get that line over there? They uh, they are moving forward right about. They started, they caught hold of Saturday. They're supposed to be working the rest of you know, this week, it's been raining, so. Yeah. They'll be moving pretty fast. They're going. Yeah. Okay, you want to take a motion? It had to be enough to exceed as well. I'm just going to say. Does it? Since we don't have business? Well, I uh, really right. have to. I mean, it's just your discretion, but it's just, I was going to give you a pretty heavy speed order, right? Yeah. Or just authorization to go out for this. Correct. Right. I'd like to make a motion that we authorize um, PAP Engineering to go out for bids, um, to advertise for bids on the reconstruction of Turbeville Road. Okay, that's the question. Motion with a second. Second. That's the board second. It's all in favor. Thank you very much. Uh, item D4, consider an act on granting an exception to Blue Wave Car Wash, 1045 Hickory Creek Boulevard, Hickory Creek, Texas, 7565, from the Hickory Creek Code Horses, Chapter 3, Voting Regulations, Article 3.08, Signs, Section 3.08.013A, All Premise Signs. Is anyone here? Uh, if you want to step up, the podium is going to tell us. <coughs> state your uh, name and address and what you want to do. Uh, I'm Katie Bullock, president of uh, Blue Wave Car Wash, that is the virtual. And so we are new business owners uh, here in Hickory Creek for about a year. And uh, the, the community is well-faced with open arms. 
and we're right here in Walter Park, and, um, and we are asking uh, for consideration for being able to have uh, a waiver for one of the ordinances against off-prem sites. So we have constructed uh, a sign intended to promote local businesses at reduced advertising rates. Uh, essentially, it's the same type of sign we have in another car wash um, off basically in another town. And we're just asking that you look at the merits of that um, for a, a waiver. And also to be able to you know, be innovative as well as ensure that it's not low visual quality. Uh, some of the different merits that it says that, that the town might consider are like that. Do you, uh, do you have a it, um, we have the pictures. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, the, so, so we brought some pictures. Okay, so the fragment's there now. Then what we're going to top of that would be up here at the top, which would be the other individual businesses. That